These pieces of white oak are original to the ship's construction in the 1790s. White oak, live oak, pine. The live oak form the timbers and the inner hull, and live oak is impervious to rot, which means the wood will last theoretically forever. And wood also can withstand heavy attack. Georgia and Florida in the United States are among the few places in the world where you can find live oak. And live oak is essential to building ships like this that makes them strong as well as fast. And these pieces, the keel, are original to the ship. Much of the rest has been restored as wooden ships do tend to leak. This ship takes on about 200 gallons of water every day that the sailors pump out using now manual bilge pumps back in the 1800s. They would have to use, um, the sailors today use a electric bilge pump to pump out the water. In the 1800s, they would have to manually pump out the 200 or so gallons that would leak in every day. Probably more would have leaked in in the 19th century as the ship now is in better shape than it was really in the age of sail. During the Constitution's battle with the HMS Java off the coast of Brazil, a British shot knocked Constitution's helm, the steering wheel, from the deck. Captain Bainbridge didn't want the enemy to know his ship was disabled and couldn't steer, so he sent Marines below deck, a dozen on this side, a dozen on the other side, and he would shout down, port, starboard, or larboard, starboard, telling them which way to pull the rope. So they continued to steer, even though the ship didn't have a wheel and Constitution defeated the Java. Hundreds of sailors would share the berthing deck, taking turns in their hammocks, but if you were an officer on Constitution, you got your own commodious berth here in the wardroom. Hammock, writing desk, all of the comforts of home on the long sea voyage. Okay. The sailors would be berthed on this deck, sharing their hammocks, one of our myths is that the people were shorter. That's the reason the berthing deck is so short. But actually, the berthing deck was designed at this height, so the gun deck would be the proper height from the sea to give it the maximum firing power. So the berthing deck was not designed for the comfort of the crew, but for the efficacy of the Constitution's guns. So the captain's cabin, private, spacious, room for guests, and something none of the sailors or officers had, his own toilet, where he could watch the masts, make sure everything was ship shape, watch the gun deck. He had a loo with a view. During the fight with HMS Java, Constitution's wheel was blown off. After the defeat of the Java, Captain Bainbridge had the Java's wheel taken off, put on Constitution, and installed in its place so he could sail the Constitution back to the United States. Some years later, a British captain came aboard Constitution and admired the ship, but he said, that's the ugliest wheel I've ever seen. Yeah. Summer of 1812, Constitution was off the coast of New Jersey when she encountered a British squadron. There was no wind. Constitution could not take on an entire squadron. Captain Hull realized his only choice was to get away. With no wind, how do you move a sailing vessel? Captain Hull had his men row out the ship's anchor in one of their longboats, drop the anchor, and then the sailors aboard used the capstan to raise the anchor, pulling the ship toward the anchor. Once the anchor was raised, put it into another vessel, have the sailors row that vessel out, drop the anchor, again, pull the ship toward the anchor. So in that way, Captain Hull was able to get away from the British fleet before they realized how his vessel was moving. So how does a dry dock work? At the far end, there are gates, like locks on a canal. Those open up, water comes in, you float the ship in. Once the ship is secured, you close the gates, pump the water out. In fact, the building right in front of me was the pumping house to pump the water out of the dry dock. Then the ship is high and dry. You can scrape the hull, repair the ship, do all kinds of work on the ship. 
What did you do before you had a dry dock? You would empty the vessel off, take everything off of the decks, tie lines to the masts, and then tip the ship over onto its side. You could do this on a beach, you could do this at a dock, scrape the hull, and then once the ship, once that side was done, repeat the process on the other side. A cumbersome process to scrape a hole, repair a hole, before you had a dry dock. This dry dock, which is still in operation today, in fact, they're doing repairs on it right now for the Constitution's next refitting, make it much easier to repair wooden ships and keep them sailing. By the 1820s, Constitution was nearly 30 years old. The average age of a warship like this was about 10 years. The Navy Department thought of scrapping the ship, building newer vessels. Why did we need to keep an old ship like this? A Boston doctor, Oliver Wendell Holmes, wrote a poem. I tear her tattered ensign down, long has it waved on high. Many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Beneath it rung the battle shout and burst the cannon's roar. The meteor of the ocean air shall sweep the clouds no more. Her deck, once red with heroes' blood, where knelt the vanquished foe, as the wind was hurrying o'er the flood and the waves were white below, no more shall feel the victor's tread or know the conquered knee. The harpies of the land shall pluck the eagle of the sea. Better that her battered hulk should sink beneath the waves, her thunder shook the mighty deep, there should be her grave. Nail to her mast her holy flag, set every threadbare sail, and give her to the god of storms, the lightning and the gale. More fitting to send the ship out to sea to die a hero's death than to leave her land to be plucked by the harpies on shore. And the country rallied to save the ship in the 1820s and has rallied ever since to save the USS Constitution.